everybody, it's Grace. And it is Grace. From Grace and Grace. Welcome back to episode two. We're back with another podcast episode. We're trying to be consistent. This week's episode is going to be the truth about being an influencer. Like every bit of truth that we can give you. All the tea. We thought it was quite, someone actually commented it on our last episode. Because so we, shout out to you because we need ideas. So shout out. Shout, shout out. out. We've been doing YouTube and we've been influencers before the word influencer was even used because i remember it just used to be youtuber, YouTuber. it used to just be youtuber because we had youtube for like a year before we started instagram yeah do you remember that it was our only platform that was when youtube was in its heyday yeah we just did we YouTube. just did youtube and then i think our manager was like you need to start an instagram yeah because we we had a joint instagram didn't we grace and grace, grace official. official still up still up we both had our, our own instagrams like privately but i think we both started them a bit later on. You were Grace Foles. Grace Foles. I was very Floss- shad. Was I Floss Foley? Maybe. We were too scared to have, have our, our government names. names. I don't know why. My because my dad has got a business, and for some reason he thought people might like put it together or something. But it's like I don't know why we weren't allowed our real names. That's why I'm simply Grace, and she was sweet like. Yeah, I know. Because our family didn't want our last names in it. We're kind of influencers. We have been for how long? But I remember it never Eight used years. to be a thing. To be an influencer kind of started when like Instagram became really big. I would say. Yeah. It never. The word influencer was never used. It was just YouTuber. And then TikTok kind of take it over the edge. Yeah. And now there's so many influencers. But you're talking to some OGs right here. Pound and makeup. Taste tests. Taste tests. Hauls. I do miss hauls. Like I used to. When was a haul would come into my subscription box, I used to be like, yeah. I don't have the patience for it now. I don't watch them. Like, I, Sometimes on um, TikTok, I'll watch them. Yeah, and it's just like clips of the thing. My patience has gone down. So like, then I got this top and it's pink and it's, it's like, obviously it's pink. Yeah, obviously it's, got obviously a it's a top. Yeah. Obviously it's got, yeah. But there was something about it. Like if Zabella used to do an ASOS haul, I used to watch it. Or Primark haul. She's done a Lush haul recently. Has she? I felt like home. What, just a Lush haul? She uploaded it. It's in a vlog. But it's okay. like a 10 minute segment. Oh my god. But anyway, we have asked you questions that. about what you want the to truth. know. The Because I, I find it really, like, even my family members find it really interesting. I feel like our friends find it really interesting. It is another world. What is the best and worst thing about being an influencer? Best thing, let's start positive. Best thing, I do just think it is the dream job. Like, you get to wake up every day, choose a cute outfit. Like, we love fashion, so for us, like, Choose, like it is the dream job like you wake up every day you choose a cute outfit you take photos it is, it's very like um shallow like you're just your job is taking photos of yourself and like fit videoing yourself but i do just love like how much freedom you have with it but i also think that's what i struggle with the most is the amount of freedom you have it's kind of up to yourself what's your favorite Best then? Thing. all the events as well fashion week <laughs> see i don't love events i like well, we can actually talk about events. Yeah, we can do. Um, yeah, I don't really like events now on this age. When I was younger, I didn't mind them, but I just I get too nervous. Um, my best thing is definitely the fluctuation, the freedom of the job. Like you don't have a boss, so like if there's a day I wake up and I don't want to work, like I don't want to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday because I'm hungover. I don't have to. Whereas like my sister works in NHS, she can't just be like, oh sorry, I'm not feeling well today. I'm not gonna go in. Like if I wake up and I've got period pains, I just won't do my Yeah, job. what's good is we can plan our schedule a bit more. So like, whereas nine to five, like I you can edit. plan it around what we actually want to do. Yeah, rather like someone telling us you've got to work this day and this day. I quite enjoy like doing my editing like in the evening, like so, at 11 o'clock. But if you worked a regular job, that would be your downtime. So you can kind of pick what time yes. of the week you do. Or like, let's say for example, one Saturday we had a night in, maybe we could wake up on the Sunday and do some content. Yeah, like which most really, people would have off. You can pick it for yourself, which is what I absolutely love. But like if I want to go on holiday and not work for two weeks because I'm on holiday with my family, that's what I can do, which is quite nice. But then it's hard because you have to like motivate yourself. Oh yeah, that's probably, maybe that's the worst. And also I, I find it so stressful for me making the decisions. Yeah, you hate the amount of decisions being self-employed takes. Yeah, because like even when I'm choosing my outfit, even oh, am I gonna do a slick back bun or am I gonna have my hair down? That background, was Instagram backgrounds, angles, what shoes to wear. Like I just find it so stressful. You find that quite overwhelming. Even like doing selects, like it sounds so. It really does sound pathetic. Like it, but it's like one little thing about your outfit could make it do really well or make it do really badly. I think mine worst is 
there is no like clear trajectory of your job like when you work at a normal nine to five or an office you might be going up for a promotion you know that the job can go up whereas this job you don't know if it's going to go up it could go down you kind of blame yourself as well if it yeah. does there's also months where you know we might gain loads of instagram followers and there's months where we might lose loads like it's just very up and down which i think is really hard when you're trying to have a bit more of like a stable career yeah because it's hard to like balance everything because it's like i would actually say we now put most effort into instagram but then all of our jobs come from TikTok. Yeah. So then should we be waking up in the way that we wake up and do Instagram? Should we be waking up and prioritizing TikTok? But it's a, it is the dream job, like there's nothing it's else. It's a great job. There is nothing else I would want to do, to be honest. Have you ever been harassed? Harassed in public by a fan. I hate the word fan, that's so embarrassing. Yeah. You should have like one follower. Um, no, have you ever been harassed? No. What's the worst experience you've ever had? I'm trying to think. We've been very lucky where uh, like, we know some people that have had like stalkers. They've had things like we've we've had been nothing extremely that weird. lucky that we've never had anyone like follow us or anything like that. And also when we've done like meet like when we've met you guys mostly it was back in the day when like we used to do the meet and greet. Remember someone sitting? So there was it was quite secure. Like, you day out. Yeah. <laughs> there was one time there was like a fifth year old. Like, yeah. We were talking about this to our mums. We went to the toilet and people saw us going to the toilet, so we started did a meet and greet and there was like a 50 year old man in the queue. That had come to this event because he knew young girls would be there. And I think our manager had to like get him out. Him out. Yeah. Um, he was a P he must have been a pedo. We've not had that many weird encounters. Oh, to be honest, we actually haven't, which is unusual, I guess. Yeah, every time we meet someone, they're lovely. They just say, Oh, we really love your like I've never had anyone or like follow us around shops or anything. You know what? I Some, sometimes have that, but not like. Oh, that's just because people too nervous to ask for pictures. So sometimes they just they follow just follow you around the shops and whisper with their friend. Yeah, which always makes you really conscious. Like, it's a bit awkward, but like I know it's like, not from a bad place, but it is a bit awkward. Yeah, when makes you know there's someone makes you self-conscious. Yeah, I can't really think of anything, but I feel like a lot of influencers must have had stalkers. Yeah, or like people that have. You do get some people that are just like, can I get a picture? And then they walk, they, they actually don't really care. They don't watch you. They just know yeah. who you are. So they want to just show their friends. But I don't mind that. I there was someone really... in our management who actually had someone knock on their door. This is quite an interesting one. Do you ever feel guilty about the amount of money you earn compared to other jobs? For like not Yes. Especially because my sister, as I keep saying, works for the NHS. Like she does such an important job. She's literally a therapist for like, the nation like she has such an important job so i do feel so guilty because she's such a hard worker and it's a hard job like she takes on a lot of people's problems and like depression and she doesn't obviously earn as much so i, I do think about it quite a lot but also it's just it's just the way it is do you know what i mean yeah like you could say the same about like footballers like yeah. they get paid to kick a ball around a the field they get paid like 50 million pounds compared it's to like, like yeah an nhs worker or a nurse or something don't earn nearly as much as that it's on it's just the way it is which is a shame but also i mean i guess the, the work you're putting in isn't a lot but the amount of people you're reaching is so it's it's a weird one like, i do sometimes feel guilty about it but also it's what it's, it's a it's, it's just, a business it's job it is just a business and like brands are going to pay what they get from it so yeah. like, brands are making profit out of us so it's like because then if we started getting paid not a lot of money you're like well i'm, I'm reaching 300,000 people so it's like that's a lot of people yeah not a lot of money so it is weird how it works but it, it is ridiculous it is it's too there's too much money but then there's a lot of jobs that earn too much money for what for what it is yeah you could say like a singer is earning too much money for just singing singing that's but it's true. like it's relative isn't it's it? just bus it's just business and it's the unfortunately world. just the way the world works like nurses should be paid more nhs workers should be paid more but it's just the way it is see i always feel guilty about gifting i feel guilty about gifting because i'm like yeah I, I know there's like girls that would love to have these pair of boots and i've got them for free i don't know i just feel guilty like no i get that do you know what i mean i would say probably six, 70 percent of my stuff goes to women's shelters 10 percent goes to ellie and then i keep the rest like we do try especially makeup we always take it to the women oh shelter. makeup we literally don't keep any makeup yeah it's relative like if you work high up in the city you're going to be paid a lot yeah and it's like someone could turn to you and say you're not working enough to earn that money but it's just the way the world works yeah you're sat at a desk all day that's not doing enough but it to them it is you ever worry about the future of influencing it does worry us but it's like you can't live your life worrying we're just so young like 
like we'll just get a job like, it's like yeah it's not it's, it's like fine we've, we've managed to last eight years so it's not gonna happen overnight like it will be a gradual thing if it were to dry up but also i can't think of any influencer that has dried up unless they've been cancelled you just have to keep moving with the times and changing because like content. even zoella she's not dried up she's had another massive thing because of her children yeah, so let's like, say five years like we might go a bit we might go downhill and then 10 years might have some kids and get married that we content <laughs> i feel like you just go th yeah like it fo your followers follow you through life yeah your audience if you can keep up like like right now our audience probably follows us for fashion but in like 10 years they might follow us for like our wedding content or like we might go traveling again they might follow us for more traveling content or baby content you know mm -hmm. there's always something or like i love those tiktokers that like stay at home and they make dinner Dish up dinner with me. Dish up dinner with me. We I could, could start watch doing dinner with me for like We years. could start doing that. Do you ever not post anything or wear a certain thing because of your influence? Yeah. I've got an answer. Like, Go on. This, I really want to do a photo with, with a cigarette, cigarette because it looks cool. We talk about this all the time. And it's, it's very Parisian. Yeah. And is it any different to holding a glass of wine? But then we get really scared of things like this. We're really scared, like really scared. And I just know it would look really cool. Like I actually have photos of my camera roll of just me holding a cigarette. It's not lit, but like, I'm, I'm too scared to post them in case like brands stop. People get really funny about things like that. It's yeah. really weird because to us, we're like, it's no worse than holding an, an alcohol. But yeah, like, I mean, there's definitely things we've posted that we've been told off about. Like we can't really film ourselves drinking. Which is ridiculous because we're literally 21 this year and it's just obvious that we drink but we're not really allowed like in the italy vlog and in the Taj pay vlog there were so many funny moments of us drunk but yeah. we were just like do you know what we probably can't put it in because number one it makes us look a bit trashy yeah but also it's like do we really want 10 years time when even we, five years do we really want to look back at that and like for people to see us being like falling over not really it's a bit embarrassing also we're very conscious when we go on holiday with other people to edit around them being drunk yes. because they've got proper jobs they don't want like their employer watching them be drunk like hello it's, it's a big thing so outfit wise though I'm trying to think i probably would wear more scandalous things if but I then we pose in bikinis, so that's kind of like the most raunchy. Like, that's like posing in underwear, really. And we I mean, do we, it. we pose in underwear. So basically, we it. do. No, but I mean like more raunchy outfits, maybe. What I'm saying is, is we've done the ultimate, which is a bikini. So we, we have done the raunchiest. I mean, the raunchiest is underwear. The raunchiest is underwear. But which we've both done. I feel like a bikini is the same amount of coverage as an underwear. No? But underwear just feels dirtier because it's yeah. lingerie. Like it's what you lengthy. Like, yeah, like you don't go out in public in a long dress set but you can go out in public in a bikini which is weird bikini pictures really don't bother me and if they bother a brand i'm like just get over it like it's literally because bikinis are part of fashion yeah 100 percent. there's nothing i really avoid style wise i mean i try not to do anything because like, you kind of have to stay to your brand so like i'm not going to wear a plain white top and a pair of jeans as a post because i know that's not yeah. my thing it's not my brand and it's not my vibe but i might wear that on a normal day but i'm not going to post in that yeah you kind of have to so every like, every outfit you think about has to be like what you want to like put show out there. to the world that's yeah it's really cringy so i'm not like, going to wear something that i know is not going to be my brand or do well same you, way you yeah wear. it's not enough these days just to have like just to wear a cute outfit like yeah you have to have a brand so that people want to follow you because yeah they like your aesthetic or whatever so for sure there's a lot more to think about these days yeah i can't just simply put on a pair of jeans and call it a day that's probably the only thing that i wouldn't post in well we're both quite conscious about t t talking too much about like dating we used to be way more open yeah but i just feel like we used to be a bit too open somewhere yeah say. yeah and then i think as we both got older we're like because i think if we actually had relationships they wouldn't be a public thing no they wouldn't we'd say we're in a relationship but we wouldn't be plastering them all over our instagrams See, so, I think if they were hot, I would post them. It sounds really bad. <laughs> if they know. were, if they were hot, they wouldn't be getting tagged. If my boyfriend, if I'm like in love, I want to show the boyfriend. I don't know if I would. I think I'd keep it private. Like, I but I wouldn't I'd... be making like YouTube videos with him. But I think I'll do an Instagram post with him. I think I'd crop the face out. He no, wouldn't be getting a tag. No though. face, no. Oh, case. having girls DMing him. Yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know because then you become like an influence couple, and that's the last thing I want yeah i don't know it's a weird one but yeah that's probably it 
does it make you more insecure? Like, do you think it's made you um, a thousand more percent. of an insecure person? One thousand percent. I think, yeah, oh, a billion percent. <laughs> One billion percent. I mean, there's a lot of like surgery that I want that I probably wouldn't want if I didn't do influencing. But you do think like I have to take pictures of my face every single day. It makes day. you look at your so face. So why wouldn't I not get them done? Like that's kind of my point of view. I'm like, why why would I not get them done? When it's I'm... part. It's an investment. <laughs> it's an investment. Like I'm taking pictures yeah. of my face every day. Like why would I not get these surgeries done? But then you have to also be like, oh, but would I get them done if I didn't do this job? Probably not. So then should I? Like it definitely makes you insecure. And also like, you know when you have things that like, you don't love about yourself, but when people are pointing them out to you, you're like, oh. I actually think the most humbling thing is when you go and you get like red carpet pictures or you get professional <gasps> pictures. That makes me want to shoot myself. Oh, like, I don't mind myself on my iPhone. When I see it in like HD, HD. Oh my god. It's so humbling. God, I actually want to die. Because I always catch a really bad shot or a really bad angle of you. Oh. And then like it makes it makes us look really stumpy actually. Because we're quite short. We're really short. So it makes us <laughs> it makes us look extra stumpy. You're like, is that actually what I look like? And it's, like, just it's so like, humbling. Yes, yeah, so it must have made us more insecure. But then I don't feel like I'm that insecure. Like I just Like there's surgery. I, I wouldn't if someone said to me, Do you think you're an insecure person? I would actually say no. I would say I'm actually very secure in myself. I'm secure in myself, but I'm realistic. I know I'm not that good looking. We're not, we know we're not VS angels, but it's like, you just have to work with what you've got. Yeah, you do, you just have to. But I do think it makes you think more about like getting things done. Yeah, for a billion percent. 1000 percent, like I used to have a spot on the side of my nose, which I got removed. Would I got it removed if I wasn't taking a picture of myself? Probably not, because I've just learned to live with it. Because I'd be like, whatever. But because I'm taking pictures of myself, it I didn't you? want it there. Yeah. Like, I've got a bumpy nose. May I get that bump removed? Perhaps. But would I bother if I didn't do influencing? Probably not. <laughs> I've booked in hair extensions. I'm teeth. tempted to get my lips done and I'm going to get my teeth done. I mean... not. I'm not getting veneers. I'm getting Invisalign. Yeah. And like, Would you have all that if you didn't do this job? Invisalign. <laughs> Billion percent. You'd get Wouldn't have the money though, probably. No. And also the other really tempting thing is that you can get a lot of surgeries for free. That is the other thing as well. Yeah, because I think we've been DM'd before by like plastic surgeons in like London and then one in like Turkey. So like we, yeah. if we wanted to, we could go and get all this stuff done for free. But like, it becomes very tempting because all these influencers, guys, they weren't born like that. No. Like you're, the prettiest people, they're not born like that. It's, it's surgery. It's the truth though. So, but I always have to remind myself that I'm 20 and I never want to look back at myself. Like I've, I've been considering a boob job for about a year now. I never want to look back at myself in 10 years and be like, why did I touch myself at 20 years old? Like, I should just let myself... So young, yeah. Yeah, I should let myself just be young and enjoy it and then think about when I'm 25. Because 20 is so young. Yeah, I think that's why I'm, like, not in any rush to get any... There's a few things I want done, like, even recently I've been looking at my nose. Like, but you, it's just a slippery slope, isn't it? Because I would <laughs> Once never... you get one thing done... I used to like my nose and now I'm looking at it and I'm like... Oh, when you get one actually, thing done, you realise that, like... It's quite easy. It's very easy to get it done. Just and like, to try hide it. it, to be honest. To hide it because it, we can control if we're on camera or not. It's not like when you're going to off an office and then everyone's going to see you've got your nose bandaged up. Yeah. It's very, very tempting, honestly, I can tell you that. <laughs> you know who I always think about? It's Molly May. She's, she literally said she had, like, everything possible done. Yeah. And, and she's never been... removed. Yeah, she's never been more self... No, she's never been more, more confident than now. So she, I think it's like kind of one of those things where it's like you want everything done and then it's you about, get it and yeah. it's like you miss your old self. And you don't, it doesn't make you any happier. So I really listen to her and I'm like, do you know what? I've actually had nothing, nothing done to my face and I probably will get Botox because I, I know I'm going to be wrinkly because I already... I don't even someone, consider Botox. Someone said I'm aging like milk. <laughs> In and out. Inside and out, but I don't even consider Botox like anything major. Is that bad? Could no, you not make anything bigger? It's just freezing. You're just freezing. And then you can go too far with it and just have. Oh like, my god! So many I know we're going to be those mums, Grace. But I already have a wrinkly forehead because I have a scar and it's already going into a line. So get it Botox. No, I'm too young for Botox. I'm not having Botox yet. What age do you start? 25? I think 25. it's 25. So we've only got four years. Oh no. Shit. Stop taking up. I got, I'm scared of needles. It's also made me very body conscious. Oh my actual Jesus. Because I remember like low key, like I always say I, I didn't enjoy LA, but I think it's because I was my most body conscious in LA and I had to shoot 
a job that involved me being in underwear. I made a really controversial TikTok and I know, yeah, I'd take it down. What one was it? I don't know what actually possessed me to make this TikTok. I put it online as well and then I had to take it down. What was it? I don't so know. So it was me. No, because it was online for about five minutes. Was I there? Was it the, your trip with your mum? No, you were there. Oh. We were in the hotel, but you went in the TikTok. It was a video of me eating Doritos and it was like, when you're starving because the portion size is, is like one crisp, but you also want to be a size six, so all you have for dinner is a packet of Doritos. Oh, Grace, why did you make that? <laughs> <laughs> like, read the room. <laughs> Well, I don't you, know what You could have made us lose our career. Has me to upload that. But that's just how I felt at the time. I was like, everyone here is a stick. I'm starving because a meal is about £30 and it's like one chip. What did we eat that day? Oh, fuck knows. I was so hungry that trip. But anyway, yeah, it definitely makes you way more body conscious. Especially because I weighed a lot more. Then I lost a lot of weight. And then that really made people comment on my body more than when I before I lost the weight. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was a massive change. Everyone was like, meh, 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 like constantly. And then you get the pressure to keep the weight off and not go back. But it's natural to like, obviously, your weight fluctuate, fluctuate. Of course. Especially from... Because when we were younger, we used to enjoy eating things that were like probably... <laughs> well, we had like a Domino's every day. Yeah, we literally, me and Grace used to eat Domino's every day. Like we didn't care. And then like when we moved out, we started to... Because I actually enjoy, really enjoy eating healthy. Like I love having like healthy food. So we did lose weight. Like it's a natural thing when you get older to, to fluctuate weight. Like you go up, you go down based on like your time of the month. Like it's just natural. But when like people constantly point it out... I mean, I actually would say people don't really point out my body anymore. Like, it was really bad for, like, when I lost the weight of about two years. And then now it's actually pretty quiet. See, I can't relate. People commented a lot on it. And I, I think I was just in a bit of it. I think it was just the stress of moving away and it turned into something. And, yeah, even over summer, people were still commenting, like, saying, I look People Ill. love to chat shit. People love it. But, like... They're never happy. You lose too much weight and they say you're ill and you look shit. And then you gain it and they're like, oh, she's a bit chubby. Yeah, but like, you literally can't win. People are like, where's Grace F's jawline gone? Or yeah. Fat? Oh my God, all the time I get, oh, Grace S is the chubbier one. Grace S is the fatter one. All the time. And then I lost the weight and then it was like, oh, she looks ill. She doesn't look right. Oh, what's happened to her? She's one of those empty. You really can't win. You literally can't win. So you just have to stay shut the fuck up and just take it, like, just do whatever you want to do. Yeah. That was a bit aggressive. Sorry about that. Sorry, oh I didn't God. mean to go this to you guys. No, I didn't think we would even talk about this, but people actually, like, when I actually think about it, people always comment on our Yeah, bodies. but it's because we're women. If we were men, people wouldn't give a flying toss. And also because we're a duo, people always compare us. We literally got one on TikTok the other day, like, well, to be fair, it was just someone like saying, how do you, no, we got one in the box saying, how do you stay so slim because you what eat box? loads of, even the, the, box? the question box? Oh, not, <laughs> not the shoe box. Where's the box? The question box, bitch. <laughs> no, we got one, and it was like, how you eat how? How do you stay so slim when you eat loads of like? It's like just don't fatty ask. foods. It's like don't it's don't like, question. Don't ask about people's bodies. Don't question people's weight. Stick to yourself. Stay in your own lane. It's the one thing you should never talk about. Because no one's weight is gonna stay the same their whole life. Like everyone's no. changes. People go through things that. Sh People react to stress differently, people... I think the general consensus is never talk about someone else's weight. And I say this to people all the time, because even my family members talk about it, and that's the one thing I say, just don't ever talk about someone else's weight, because it's a very tough subject for a yeah. lot of people. Just keep your mouth shut. Like, if I have children, I will not even mention... The W. The W, the, w. the like, the, the S. The, and everything. The S. <laughs> the letters. Because, honestly... It's just a no. So why are people commenting it when they don't even know us? It is this job though. Yeah. Because like I never had it growing up. It was never like probably why I did gain a bit of weight, but it was never a thing in my family to talk about weight. It was never, ever, 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 ever topic of discussion. And then that's when I came on the internet, I was like, Oh, this is Whoa. New. I didn't realise it was such a big thing. Yeah. And TikTok doesn't help because TikTok is toxic AF with the what I eat in a day. This was when I was like struggling and I would go on TikTok and I would just see like this girl eating cucumber and I'd be like yeah, it but, doesn't help. Yeah, oh shit, should I eat like that? But yeah, we've just we've never really spoke about this before. But and it's, I think this was a lot. Like I don't, I don't like speaking about this. No, life, there's so it. much more to life than food yeah. and what it's you been, look like. It's been a struggle, but when it's not, it doesn't define us. It doesn't define us. Yes, 
and to be honest with you like so like it's so sad but it's it's so toxic everyone Most, we know has had every girl problem. we know has had eating problems and that's yeah. just facts including okay. like family like honestly every single yeah. woman I, in my life has had problems Same. with food probably uh, oh this is a really good one this is a really good one do you find it hard telling people on dates what your job is i literally had this the other day i was in a nightclub and i met this guy and i thought he was really good looking and i just i was with my friend who is like she's a student and i just was like you know what i cannot be bothered to number one i think it sounds quite embarrassing being like i'm an influencer and then they're gonna ask you on instagram and you're gonna then be expected to give your public and then i don't like because i have a private instagram that's just for friends and then like guys i give it to guys i always say like on hinge or in public i always say like oh i'm i just work in fashion or i say but in this situation for some reason i just blurted out that i'm a fashion student and i studied with my friend yeah that's a good one but i tapped it made it i made it really obvious that i'm not because i tapped her and went what uni do we go to but also didn't <laughs> didn't he find you on hinge but yeah we matched on hinge before what does your hinge say my hinge just says oh no my hinge doesn't have anything in it oh. and we hadn't had a conversation about what i did so like i low-key lied to him but like if i went on a date i would say look this is my instagram i do the announcement this is my instagram this is me if you like hannah montana <laughs> But Take I do, off the wig. I do just find it embarrassing, like saying I'm an influencer. And I also don't want them to then want to go on a date with me because they know I have followers. Yes. That's why I lie. On my hinge, it says I work in fashion marketing. And then I always give my private Instagram, but sometimes I do, because if you look up Grace, obviously my public's gonna come up before my private. So I know they I know what I know they know. But I appreciate when they pretend they don't know. Yeah. But like I will never ever ever say i'm an influencer unless like on a first date I'll, in real life i'll say i work in fashion marketing but if they keep pestering they're like for what company i go i always go self-employed and they're like okay so what do you I do i think it makes if it sound keep, like we do only fans yeah if they keep pestering me then i will just say oh I, I do social media that's all i say i do social media and then maybe the second day i will go more into detail and then usually by the third date it's when they start asking me questions or they found probably found the instagram like the thing is i just don't I never want someone yeah, to I go on a date with me because I want followers, but then I also do find it a bit embarrassing at the same time, being an influencer. I usually say it on the second day. Also, I never want someone to, like, watch oh, my YouTube videos. Oh, the YouTube. Which, guys, I've had this... Oh, my God, this is such a funny story. Oh. I went on three dates with a guy, and he was like, oh, I found your YouTube. And he went, you're so natural. So I thought he meant natural on camera. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. And I went, well, I have been doing it for years. Like I'm quite natural on camera. And he was like, no, like you don't wear any makeup or brush your hair. <laughs> um, okay. It's because on YouTube okay. is my safe space. So like, I no, feel I like- I come on here, no makeup, just looking like I've been dragged through a head. Yeah. It's fine. Would I do that on my Instagram? Absolutely not. But I feel like you guys watching are like our true friends. Yeah. And, like, you can see us in that light. Whereas like, TikTok Instagram. is like new friends. No, Instagram's too scary. Instagram is like fake friends. Yeah. TikTok is like new friends. This, this is this is for life. This is for life. So like, I forget that boys can watch this because in my head, this is for the girls in the game. Yeah, like we literally. It's like Instagram. I put my best self on, but this, it's like then you can go back and watch us when we were twelve. Yeah, like you guys can see some really embarrassing stuff of us. And like, there's a lot that I've missed on here that I don't think I'd want a boy to know. No. Like they can watch our whole. Like on, on on Spotify, our whole podcast episodes, which were about like really embarrassing shit. The most I've ever liked a guy, he has watched our YouTube, the, watched our podcast episode that was about him, and he's also Bless filmed. Up. He's was filmed him watching. It was my second channel. What video was it? Do you remember? Oh, it was like a haul or something. No, it was a what I got for my birthday. Oh, oh that's even worse. This was like a couple years, probably two years ago. So yeah. yeah, we try and avoid it, but also it is unavoidable. It is unavoidable, it's unavoidable but like, oh, I just... So I always, I don't try and say it. On a first date, I really try not to say it. Unless they pester me, and then I feel like I have to. I also don't want someone to want to pursue things with me because they think they're going to get some followers out of it. Not that we have that many followers, and also like, I think... But guys, people are desperate. But like you just don't, I just don't want that to change someone's opinion of me. 100%. For the worst or for the better. Like. But we've actually been very lucky at the moment. Like I don't think I've ever encountered someone that I've been like, oh, they want me for my followers. Because also we don't have that many followers. Let's yeah, let's calm down. Too. And like, what are we going to post of them? Like, 
They ain't getting a tag anyway. For me, like, they might get the fucking torso. They're not yeah. getting the head. <laughs> a hand. You know, a hand. hand. We actually enjoyed this episode. Yeah, I love I love this podcast thing. Comment what next week's is going to be. Yes, we need a whole topic. We're going to be really this consistent This is a slow topic, this. but we need a new topic. Every Sunday, you're going to see us. Let us know. Like, it could be like, friendship. Bye. What else? We could do an advice episode if you guys want to like <gasps> yeah, ask us to do Agony on, agony on. Give us ideas. We could do like a boy one where we we're talk, struggling. We talk a bit about the dates we've gone on and like the types of guys we've met recently and then we can answer advice questions. That yeah, I feel one. like you want I feel like you're all waiting for a boy episode. Yeah, so we need one that's to, just about We might have men. to feed the children. Give them what they deserve. <laughs> okay guys. This is everybody's brunette. See you next week. Au revoir. Au revoir.